week has been a fun one. Outside all of the news, I attended COGX here in Los Angeles, and it was awesome. There were so many good talks. There was a lot going on about AI. There's so much energy in the space. I can't wait to talk more about it. And some of the speakers, Will I Am, I'm gonna do a special one on his uh, FYI application. A lot has been going on that I am excited to share. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you find any of this useful or helpful to you in any way. If you also wanna get updates going directly to your inbox every single week, I will leave a link to my newsletter that I put out every single Tuesday that goes right to your inbox and that'll be in the description. I also have an AI toolbox where you can check out all of the latest news, tools, and workflows at your own pace. Okay, let's jump right in. OpenAI has had a huge week, some with speculation, and they have also had some interesting deals to chat about. They are supposedly working on a search feature for ChatGPT that will put it more into competition with Google and Perplexity. It's probably really smart to do that since that's what more people are using it for instead of just a really smart friend to have conversations with. It ultimately always goes back to who is the king of search and finding information. They would provide sources similar to Perplexity. Now, if you see right here, I went to the site and it now says not found. It's interesting, it used to say that, but it doesn't anymore. See right here, they, they basically um, registered this new subdomain called search.chatgpt.com, and then it went out over the weekend, and I got this same thing where it says not found, and uh, we'll see how this plays out, but it should be really interesting. The licensing deals keep happening as well, as OpenAI partners with publisher dot dot dash Meredith, which owns brands like People Magazine and Homes and Gardens. Now they want to use their content to train their models and give sources probably as well now if they're going to be doing search. Now after doing it the wrong way with the New York Times and Alden Capital, they're trying to take a different approach and maybe not get sued this time. This comes after the deal they just made with the Financial Times that I talked about in my last video. Also in the works at OpenAI is a media manager tool that they want to release in 2025 that will allow creators to block AI training. If you take right here, this is from VentureBeat, uh, they talk about a few different updates. OpenAI is developing Media Manager, a tool that will enable creators and content owners to tell us what they own and specify how they want their works to be included or excluded from machine learning research and training. Over time, we plan to introduce additional choices and features. This will require cutting edge machine learning research to build a first ever tool of its kind to help us identify copyrighted text, images, audio, and video across multiple sources and reflect creator preferences. They're trying to collaborate more with creators as they get bigger and hopefully set the gold standard in the new upcoming industry. Now, since the data scraping of websites have become prominent, a tool like this definitely needs to be the solution. If it isn't them, it will be some other company to solve that very specific problem. Now, Autodesk, the company behind Maya and CAD, opened up about their research project called Bernini, which will use AI to create high-end functional 3D shapes. Maybe Autodesk was waiting until they could create a better model before announcing, but what they have done looks pretty promising. I haven't got my hands on it yet, but I am excited to. Let me show you a little bit what it's about. At Autodesk, we're obsessed with geometry, and that obsession is reflected in our software. Introducing Research Project Bernini. Experimental generative AI for quickly generating functional 3D shapes from 2D images, text, voxels, or point clouds. Our first Bernini model is focused on unlocking professional workflows, generating multiple geometrically realistic 3D objects to accelerate every stage of the creative design process. As Autodesk trains its generative AI on larger, higher quality datasets and modalities, the technology will become increasingly useful and compelling, producing 3D models and objects that work in a real world and serve the purpose the designer has in mind. Because the world's designers, engineers, builders, and creators trust Autodesk to help them make anything.
They claim that once more people use it, data will obviously keep getting better. We'll see how it goes. Now, Kriya has added video to their universe. Let me show you. On Twitter, they talk about it. And this is uh, what they've released so far. If you come down here, I'll leave the, this link in the description as well. Uh, you're now able to create these images and add keyframe images, how the video should look at a certain place in the time frame, which kind of goes along with a real time image generation. You can make text prompts describe how the video should look in a specific time range. And here you can change the duration of a video and move keyframes around uh, and text prompts around the timeline. The following are settings you can tweak to generate videos at different aspect ratios as well. Uh, right here, it talks about generation occurs in two stages. The first stage creates a low resolution preview. The second enhances the video. You can cancel the process at any time just by clicking the white button on the left. It's pretty neat. I mean, um, it, it's really coming along. And if you assume that they're doing this pretty well, again, I always go back to Mid Journey. And when Mid Journey announces, and even Apple, when Apple announces, <laughs> it's going to get crazy and that is coming up rather quickly. There's a new Canadian search engine that just came out of stealth mode named Upend and they are claiming that they're powered by 100 different LLMs. Right here you can see that new AI search engine Upend emerges from stealth. Now I went to the site, uh, it's pretty interesting. If you go right here, one sec, you'll see this is what it's going to look like. Um, it's not really working properly right now. I wasn't able to use it quite yet. It seems very similar to Perplexity. It feels early, uh, but let me show you. Now, if you look at this right here, you'll see when you come to the search engine, they have a taskbar and you can literally pick which, uh, which model that you wanna use. And if you wanna see all 100 models, you literally come here and it has all the models. You can do uh, any open source. You have Mistral, you have, um, you have Claude, Haiku, Claude 3, Sonnet, like literally they're adding anything. And then you just click on that and then it tells you right here what uh, you are using. So you could come here and use Claude and that's the idea because what they wanna do is be able to just filter all of it into one place versus go to all of these sites. Uh, you have to log in. It wouldn't really take me to anything. It wouldn't show me prices. Uh, that is something to watch because it is something I know a lot of people have been asking for. In the end, there are gonna be many that emerge. It's likely that Google is gonna be the one that continues to hold the keys to the kingdom while perplexity will emerge to fight for market share. I think things like this will be very useful and will and will most likely get acquired because these seem a little bit smaller. Now, Apple found itself again in a little bit of a hot water as well, right? Something good happened this week in their announcement and something maybe a little bit negative happened. First, let's talk about the bat. They released a commercial for their new iPad where it appears to have a crushing machine crushing all of the devices that creatives love and use over time to create art. You could say it's gotten a little backlash. You see all these tweets <laughs> like 20 years later and all the things that fit in your pocket. All these um, celebrities and all these people are just talking about all of the things that it's killed. I know Hugh Grant was one of them. If Samsung ever did this, people would destroy them. Uh, there's something grim and horrifying about this ad, the violence of it all <laughs> to create the iPad. Someone also in China actually reversed the ad to make something a lot more beautiful <laughs> to create all of these things. Now, Apple also released into the world their M4 chip with Neural Engine, which will be most likely powering all of their new AI features that they announced next month at their WWDC. You can use tools like Octane at four times the rendering speed and play high performance games, which look absolutely amazing. Amazing. Now they claim that their M4 chip uses only a quarter of the power that chips in PCs are using to do the exact same tasks. Now their neural engine is operating at 38 trillion operations per second. Crazy, right? Microsoft released its fourth annual work trend index to talk about the current labor market and how AI is reshaping work. Now here are a few of the key points. If you look at this, the AI uh, grounds, well, three out of four people are using AI at work. 75% of people are already using it. 46% started using it. Uh, I'm just trying to show you a few of the things. I'll leave a link to the, this in the description as well. Just talking about AI aptitude across all roles in the industry and how the rise of uh, AI power users uh, and how the power user payoff of AI at work. And a lot of the companies aren't even adopting it yet, 
but their their employees want to use it. So there's going to be a point where, um, you know, advice to business leaders, organizations looking to take advantage of their employees, enthusiasm for AI can take the following steps because a lot of these businesses can't do it because of privacy and security issues, but the, the employees are still using it. So how do you integrate it so the employees of all of these companies can actually use these tools to really help them at work? There's going to be a lot coming up. I know I've seen a lot of enterprise black box security solutions, and they're going to be uh, coming for every everyone everywhere. Google just released AlphaFold 3 AI. Now, it is able to predict the structures and interactions of molecules, including proteins, DNA, RNA, all of it. It is helping people understand biology at the molecular level and give scientists ways to find treatments and create medications like never before. AlphaFold 2 has already helped with advancements in malaria vaccinations and cancer treatments. Now it has gone even further. Medicine has always had its difficulties. Doctors and scientists working in silos and not sharing their data, not being able to advance quickly. Drugs can't be the same for every single person as we are all chemically made different, right? Being able to understand DNA at a molecular level might even allow us to treat people as individuals and make custom drugs to treat custom problems. This is very exciting. President Biden announced the creation of an AI data center in Wisconsin, which is also a battleground state for the election this year. The Microsoft data center will cost $3 billion and be built where the supposed Foxconn LCD factory was going to be built. Magnific announced that they are dropping their price by 50% now that they have been acquired by Freepik. They are an amazing image upscaling tool. If you have not used it yet, you really should try it out. Now, while OpenAI is planning a big announcement on Monday and Google will be making an announcement on Tuesday with, with at their conference, so it will be shaping up to be a pretty crazy week. Not to mention we have less than a month to hear all of Apple's big AI announcements. They better come up with something really good. Now you expect a lot more to come very soon. So don't forget to like, subscribe, keep coming back. There's going to be a lot I am sure on the next video and I'm excited to share it all with you. See you next time.